Okay, is it working properly now? Like the BQA Twitch is not... Okay, there we go. Finally, it's actually working now. I don't know what the heck was up with that. Oh, oh Lord. Okay, so. We get in that setup. I want to see, I want to see if the sound is doing okay. Let's get Twitch. Let's look at the BQA live channel. Hello. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, hello. Hello, sound. Yeah, hello. yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so. Okay, I'm gonna give it a second. Let me put that down so I don't have an echo. And let me pull up the PowerPoint just in case just to help me stay on track for this course. Yeah. Okay, cool. We have two minutes before start time. But normal maps, we're covering those. I wanna s we're covering Pingu as well. So let me have that pulled up. Ah, there it is, GitHub. Downloading from GitHub is always so weird. There we go. I think it'd be download zip. Should be the one that we need. All right. Man, this weekend, like, there was a big, like, car event going on down at, um, the firm and it was like I, I've had it in the back of my mind like all day I'm like I know there's something going on today I know there's something going on today I'm not going to the event but I, I had planned to go originally I think and you know today is the day and my brain like I don't know my brain and my body is like I'm having the like reaction like i need to be like i'm supposed to be there but i'm I actually am not and this has been in my this has been like swirling around in my head because i had on facebook i was like i'm interested in going but i didn't i, I don't i didn't actually plan to go because i didn't like set aside the funds for it uh to make it it's just giving me anxiety a little bit anyway it's 10 a.m and it is time to start the final stream, final stream for today's texture pack course and also my final stream for BQA. I know, I know it's sad, but all good things must come to an end. So I wanna end teaching you guys something really cool. Today is actually, um, today is an actually interesting day. Today we're talking about 3D modeling, right? Uh, and we're talking about, um, we're talking a little bit more about textures, um, but we are also, I just know a lot more about textures because today's texture conversation is a little bit more in depth than the one that we talked about last time. So, um, this is my pack and let me fix, <laughs> let me fix this cause I already, okay, it is on VSync. So we're on, we're, we're good on VSync. So we shouldn't sh hopefully have too much nonsense going on. Yes, I know, Tuner Fest. Um, so we're going to be talking about spectral mapping, normal mapping, and obviously our 3D models that we've got going on to make our pack look super de duper cool and super de duper custom. So um, I guess let's kind of recap what we talked about last time. So last time we talked about the difference in between, um, we talked about the difference in pixel count for um, texture packs and how they can affect the quality of the, the play of the pack. We talked about how to properly make textures, you know, um, not just 
taking something and throwing it in the game and expecting it to look right. We have to prep the files before we throw them in the game. Otherwise, they'll look funky, right? Um, we talked about, um, let's see. We talked about um, the process of actually making a pack, which is to essentially start Minecraft, the version that we want to make the pack in, um, take that version from where it is installed from, where it's installed at, put it where we want it to be, like where, like our little work area where we change the file type so that we can break the game apart, remove all the unnecessary files that we're not going to work with, and isolate the ones that we are. Um, and then we essentially just took whatever file we wanted, which was sand at the time, we changed the properties a little bit in Photoshop, made the sand pink, saved it as the original file name, zipped all that package back up, and then pushed it back out into the game to where everything was changed, right? So um, let's go ahead and start with today's agenda. Um, and this is, we're still in my pack right now, so we should probably get out of that. Maybe, let's, let's, well, let's, let's see first. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here, so. Let me open up my my Streamlabs thing here so I can pull up the second screen. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. where's my Dell? There's my Dell. So we're we're hold up, we're we're a little. <laughs> We've already talked about that, but um, okay. So agenda. Um, course overview part one review. We've already done our part one review, so we're skipping that. Um, our course overview, we've already talked about pixels last time, so we don't need to go into that again, but we will be talking about normal maps, a difference between spectral, spe spectral maps, I call them spectral maps, but it's like spectral, <laughs> um, and um, texture variation. I'm going to touch on that a little bit too, because that is something that is actually quite interesting and can kind of just kind of pump up the quality of the pack a little bit and we'll get into that as well so let's see here we got our manual overview ba -ba -ba -ba. texture problems so this is let's see la, 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 la. we talked about that Pingu, last time when we were talking about the pixel count thing and making things better for performance, I mentioned a program called Pingu, P-N-G-O-O. -O. Um, now, when you are making textures uh, in whatever program you make, whether that be MS Paint or Photoshop or Corel Studio, whatever, um, there are things you can do within those programs to limit your file size. But one thing you can also do, a little extra icing on the cake, is download this program. So um, I'm going to probably include the link to this in the comments. Um, it is the GitHub repo here. Oh wait, why not be able to? I gotta do this through. <laughs> I gotta do this through here because there we go. So this is the link to um, Pingu. Uh, what you would do is you would go to code and then you would download the zip file, which I don't think I have Pingu installed on this computer after I did a clean wipe. So I'm going to probably do that um, for you guys to see. Let's go ahead and take off the Dell really quick. Yeah, I don't think I have Pingu installed. I do not. Okay, so that's that works out well. So in my downloads folder, we have Pingu Master Zip, in which I'm going to I'm just gonna extract all just to make sure that I download the right things. Let's see, is this it? Is this it? Yeah, this sh hopefully should be it. Let's see, program not see that. Oh wait, I'm not sure. I think this is the wrong thing. Let me see. This is the right thing, but I'm trying to like get the correct download that I need. Let's see. Go to open with GitHub on desktop clone. 
is I don't think it's that batch operations compressor probably compressed. Where is the like I can't find the installer, man. Damn. Oh man, I mean bad word. Don't say that, kids. Okay, so that's okay. <sighs> Might have the inst I think I have the do I have the installer in my installations? I hope so. I don't. I should have installed this beforehand. That's okay though. You install Pingu, man. Uh, and Pingu basically is a little, um, I don't want to say it's like a batch file, but it is basically a file where you put your, like you go and you search for your, your little image and it runs this through a, um, a compressor and it spits back out the image at a lower quality. So normal, simple stuff. Um, it's a really, it's, it's a really useful program and I'm glad that I found it. But what I can do is I'm actually going to include this. Can you download? There you go. Where is the download? I feel like I'm having a hard, I'm having a hard time finding this today. I'll do it this later. All right, well, fail for me. That's okay. All right, so let's go to Dell. All right, so that is a really good optimization program. Freaking, where is? this raster imaging problems we talked about those normal maps all right we'll talk about normal maps and spectral maps because that is going to be like the bulk of today so normal maps and spectral maps what are those essentially these are ways that you can kind of tr you can kind of um trick the game into making things look 3D, if that makes sense. Say you don't know how to make 3D models, or maybe you have 3D models and you kind of want to amplify the look of those things. That is where normal maps and spectral maps come into play, or specular maps. We'll call them specular maps because that's really what they're called. Uh, normal maps are um, similar to like, I guess like height maps, and where they um, take the image that you have and they um, kind of, it kind of like creates little bumps and grooves via RGB channels. Um, you would typically put that, in, you typically put the image you want into like a program for that. Photoshop used to be able to do this. I don't know why, but they decided that they they wanted to remove that feature, which happened like late last year, which was really annoying because anytime I needed or wanted to make a normal map, um, I would just do it through Photoshop. But you can't do that now. I don't know why they took that out. But in that case, I actually ended up finding a... Um, I actually ended up finding a website called uh, Normal Map, which is also a GitHub, <laughs> which is also a GitHub thing, um, where you can literally do all of this stuff. It's really you could literally just throw it all in here, and it'll sit, it'll spit back out the normal map that you need. So this here is like essentially the texture so let's say i made like a spherical texture or on like a block um it would generate this map which you can actually play with things like the strength the level if you see the change that's happening there um the sharpness how how, how rough or smooth it is and it will simulate all those grooves and all of that on the out on the um on the opposite thing here uh, and you would name 
the file. So in our case, we would be naming it after whatever we would be replacing it with. So if we wanted to make a spectral map for like a log or something, at the top of a log, then we would name it that. And then we would actually put, we would actually put a dash in at the end. Um, that's mainly, in my opinion, um, it really helps you just like know what's what, but also the game is gonna pick that up and it's gonna be like, oh, this is a normal map. And it won't, essentially it won't take the file that is named the same thing and replace it with the file that you want. So if I have three files, one is the actual texture that I want the players to see, then we've got a normal map for the same texture and a specular map for the same texture they're all named the same thing it's gonna conflict you know it's gonna try to pick and choose which version of that texture it wants to use and that's not what we want so we need to separate them by name so for any normal map that you make that would be a dash n and then for any specular map that you make that would be a dash s um so that's normal maps um, and I'm actually going to show you guys what those look like in the game. Um, and also going to show what specular maps look like in the game. So let's talk about specular maps. So specular maps um, are another way to um, trick the game into making things 3D. <laughs> Um, specular maps uh, communicate how shiny or dull or how uh, bright or opaque something is um, and how it interacts with the light, you know, in the game. Uh, these are really helpful whenever you uh, decide you want somebody to use a shader pack. So if you if they're if you're making a pack to be used with a shader pack, a lot of times people will make their pack. Um, to be used with like Sonic, uh, Sonic Ethers Unreal shaders, which is what I do. Um, and the, the reason for that is because it impacts the light. You don't have to worry too much about 3D modeling because you've got these in there and whatever shader you're using is gonna, is gonna directly interact with the specular map to kind of just pump up all of that realism and quality or whatever you're going for. So there are three different channels because specular maps also work on the RGB channels. You've got your red channel, which is your roughness, or that's the way that I learned it. I learned that your red channel is roughness, how smooth or how bumpy something looks. Your, um, your metallic channel, your green channel is going to communicate how shiny something is. So is it going to be dull? Is it going to be, is it going to be super blinding when you look at it, when the light hits it? That's what the green channel is for. And then the blue channel, that is your emission channel. So how bright something is going to shine or how dull something is going to be, you know, as far as the shiny is concerned. Um, so let's see for the for these things there is let's see right okay so how do i get the game to or how do i get yeah how do i get the game to recognize that something is super shiny or super dull well on top of us working in those specific channels there's something that you need to know and that is that um it works on kind of a white versus black scale, if that makes sense. Essentially, the brighter or the wider you make something, that means yes, 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 very, very much this thing. And the darker or the blacker you make something, that means no, I don't want this to do whatever this property stands for. For example, um, my iron texture, right? So. I, the iron texture that I made is actually a picture that I took from outside. I was walking around and I was trying to cross the street. I looked over to my right and I'm like, oh, it's the, it's the light pole. <laughs> so I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know, this is, a, this, pack's a good, this is a pretty good texture for iron. I think I'm gonna use, I'm gonna take a picture of the light pole and use that for iron. So I did that, but to communicate its shiny property, what I basically did was I put it in Photoshop, 
I isolated that that texture. Um, let's see. I'm gonna take this, and I'm actually gonna get rid of all this rain so that you guys can actually see what I'm talking about, because this is not gonna work otherwise. Well, it kind of works, but let's get over here. Yeah. So let's do weather clear. There we go. It's getting all shiny now. Um, yeah, so I essentially isolated the channel that I wanted this to operate on. So this is really shiny. So I wanted the metallic property. That means that would be the green channel. So I turned off the red channel. I turned off the blue channel because I didn't really need those. And this texture, I made it grayscale. Um, and then because I wanted it to be pretty, pretty shiny, um, what I did was I pumped up the, co I pumped up the brightness of the texture so I could make it as white as I needed it to be so that when I resaved it as iron block s for spectral or specular, um, it would start showing very shiny when I put it in the game. Um, that way it's not messing with the actual texture that I took, as we can see, and it's still giving me that property that I want. Um, then we've got, let's see, now an item like, that's kind of shiny, it's got some shine on it. Let's see, what is a good, what is a good texture that's pretty dull, I think, that I have changed already? We can try, sure, we can try, we can try, the, oh, well, yeah, we can try this guy. So this is my wood texture. As you can see, these textures look very, very different. Um, our iron is very shiny, our wood is very dull, so it doesn't have that same shine, but what it does have is a little bit of roughness on it. So that's that red channel working out there. And an even better way to, um, and an even better blocks to kind of view this on, let's see, um, let's see, copper. My copper texture is actually pretty good for this. I'll just like look at a bunch of these these guys here so that you can kind of see the difference that it's making in the the actual texture itself this has got a little bit of dull like we've got a little bit of dull and shiny working on there if you look you can kind of see as I move around that it's kind of changing a little there and then we've got you see that that's that spectral. It's kind of giving the, the illusion of, of height and bump. Um, and these are, and as we get farther on, this is kind of like working in conjunction with those normal maps to just kind of help that 3D look. Now, these guys aren't too shiny. I didn't want them to be shiny like the iron because they're copper, you know, they're supposed to be a little more oxidized. Now, if I wanted, I could probably up the shine on on the normal copper. Um, for that texture, what I did was I took a picture of a penny and I kind of just like blew it up and then started using my patch tool and my spot healing to fill out the shapes. It was really cool. And then from there, I, con I, I, I did like a, another cloud effect and I added that, I changed the color, I made it green, and we started erasing bits and pieces of it to kind of blend in. And we just kind of continued that process. Now this is just a green version of the original copper texture, but it, see here, it's fully oxidized. And I should probably add a, add a map for this texture as well, because copper doesn't when it oxidizes it's not completely smooth and green it looks more like that but <laughs> it because that is fully oxidized copper we want to get rid of all of that brown right 
um, let's see, another example is my magma texture. This is actually the texture that I was talking about wanting to show you guys, right? This is the texture that took me a long time to, to figure out and I had like no help. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's actually take a look at this in a photo editing program. What does this actually look like? So we're going to save and quit that. And we're gonna close Minecraft because I don't want any mishaps like last time with the nonsense of freaking like the 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 graphical problems that we had i still have no idea what that was about but so let's open up photoshop oh lord <laughs> okay so for photoshop what's a good I guess we'll talk about the iron texture again because that is really what that is really like one of the the best textures to look at for like the metallic properly property so where is my what is it what is it in metal i think it's in metal <laughs> it's gotta be i'm pretty sure yeah it is in metal okay so those are my custom metal textures but we're not going to talk about those so Here's the texture that I isolated and made all seamless and whatnot, right? Why is this not, why, is, why are you not, there we go. Cause I don't know what you're going through here. Oh, I need to fix that. That is not, yeah, I need to, I need to fix that. Glad I looked at that. Bad me, I did not prepare it correctly. But here, so this channel is is actually like a yellow, and that's because I've got a roughness and a metallic texture on it here. Oh my god, I had that thing on the screen this whole time. I'm sorry, guys. Y'all probably was messaging me. I don't even know. Let's see, let me put up this here. Dude, I think I'm just like super nervous today. What's it happens? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I have bad nervousness. <laughs> like, oh my. All right, let me take this off. Let's see where you at. Get out of here. Okay, there. Now you can actually see what I'm talking about instead of me just like talking. So, here's our iron texture. Um, and then we have over here our spectral map for the iron texture. It's yellow. And that's because I have my red roughness texture or channel on, and then I've got my green, should be my green, yeah, um, metallic texture, uh, pad or what, what channel, channel, my brain. I have my green channel on. Um, I don't really need roughness. Um, this was really when I was like just learning how to use um, or how to make spectral or specular maps. Um, if I removed the red channel, it would work all the same. And because iron is such a smooth texture in any, um, any bumps or grooves I would put on iron, I would usually do in the modeling process or did do in the modeling process there's no need to have the red channel on. Um, but if um, if I wanted it to be glowy, which it doesn't have a glowy property, so me making this blue likely wouldn't do anything. Um, it wouldn't emit any kind of light, so having the blue channel on wouldn't really do much. But if it were a block like redstone, which my redstone does have the blue channel activated because that glows at night, um, then that be on now if we take a look at how bright this is so we're actually we can actually play with this um i'm going to save i'm going to save this texture so our iron texture i'm going to save this a quick export quick export as png and we're going to save it to our tutorial pack as iron block 
Um, let's see textures block. Okay. So we have saved our iron block. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the difference between super shiny and super dull um, and how that actually and like what that process actually looks like. So this is the normal brightness that I have on this texture. And if you look here, if I turn off these textures or actually activate them all, because that's what we want, um, it's just a solid square it's just a solid square for me um it's a kind of white texture it's not fully white it's actually a little bit gray because i don't want it to be extremely shiny like brindingly brindingly metallic you know um i want it to have some shine but i don't want it to be dull so it's a gray color um let me go ahead and turn our green channel back on and then we're going to export this quick export this PNG um, as iron block dash us. So that's a halfway. That's like a, a an ideal shiny for our iron block. But we're also going to make another block an iron block for we're going to make two other blocks an iron block for um, the purposes of this. Um, with some good blocks, we'll do we'll do andesite and diorite that's what we'll do so i'm going to quick export this as andesite save and i didn't actually like turn the t turn a layer on before you save something guys just in case it saved anyway it saved anyway so that's good but still i just want to make sure that that does the, what, what it's supposed to do um, and so for this, I'm just going to make a copy because I don't want to overwrite the one that I have because it's pretty perfect, you know, and this is the actual file. So I don't want to mess with the actual file. Um, so at least mine, you guys can do whatever you want with your files for this guy. Um, I want this guy to be like really, really, really um bright like a very extremely exceptionally bright <laughs> um thing here so let me go can i even get any oh this is max brightness okay well then if that's the case then let's do can i i don't think i can get this any brighter adjustments levels maybe i can Ooh, that is really bright really bright white I mean, let's like, let's like pump that up, man. Okay. So that is an even brighter white that I did not know was possible, <laughs> but we're going to go with that. I want to, I'm curious to see just how bright <laughs> this is going to get. <laughs> yeah, that I don't anticipate it'll be much different, but I'm curious to see, and I'm going to write down the blocks that we're altering here. Andesite equals super bright. I'm gonna put super B. And we got iron, which is gonna be the normal. And then we are going to do diorite. We're just gonna be, we're just gonna be a little bit, a little more gray, a little more dull. Um, I'm gonna put dull one because it's not gonna be the dullest. And then we'll do stone we'll change stone as well and stone will be the absolute dullest shine imaginable and possible so oh what the devil oh that is interesting okay my my screen it's got like a little like haze like where like right above where the green is I thought it was like burned into my monitor, but no, it moves with the monitor. It might just be like the 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 caliber of monitor that I have here for this. So stone is gonna be dull too, which is gonna be the most dull we got. So let's go here. Just gonna go quick export. Um and a site dash s and i don't think it's called andesite block I'm pretty sure it's just called andesite so we don't have to worry too much about about what it's called 
So we're gonna go back to our normal iron block and we're just gonna work from this guy. And uh, turn all my channels on. Image adjustments. Um, color, not color balance. Levels. And we're gonna bring this down to like, We'll bring it about halfway, about halfway almost. And then the next one, we're gonna make this completely dark. Absolutely completely dark. So image adjustments levels and bam. Hello? Oh yeah, it's yeah. Completely dark, absolutely black. Boom. All right, and so this guy, I'm gonna turn off our red and our blue channel. So now we got like a darker green going on here. And this guy, same thing, goodbye red, goodbye blue. And it looks black, <laughs> it looks black, but it is still on um, our, our green channel. And matter of fact, just to be safe, uh, just to be safe, I'm gonna take it up a little bit just so I can see the green, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Let's see, images, levels, we'll bring this. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, we'll do that. All right, so this is what we got. We basically are saying completely white. Absolutely, we want you to be the brightest, shiniest thing on the face of the earth. And then we've got, eh, I want you to be bright, a little bit dull, you know. And then we've got, I want you to be dull, you can throw a little bit of brightness in there. And then we've got, absolutely not, I don't want you to be bright at all. Like, I don't want you to shine at all. I want you to be as, as, as dull as dirt. <laughs> um, and so now, let's go ahead and save the ones that we want as the appropriate, as the appropriate um, specular nap. So we've got diorite dash s, and then we've got uh, let's see quick export stone dash s. Uh, oop. I pushed sure it saved though. Okay, that's part. Yeah, it's saved. Just replace it anyway. Um, but what we don't have is the actual block. So we've we've just made this the specular maps for those, but we don't have the actual texture. So we're gonna save this image as each of those blocks. So quick exports. Um, we've got andesite. We've got iron. We did diorites. Not diotai. Dio right bam save and then quick export as a stone save okay so we got those those look great um and we are done with that now i want to say something last time we were here and it gave me such a hard time and I still don't know why. So I remember when I told you how to make a pack and I talked about the pack.png. Yeah, well, it, it works like I said it does, but for whatever reason, the image that I made for that pack would not register. I have no clue why. I don't know if it's because there's text in there or, or what. But literally, I went and I did the same, ex same exact process, the ex same exact process, and it worked normally. I swear, I swear that like this is out to just be mean to me, but I'm going to change the pack.png now for you. So, <laughs> so we're going to go open. Um, and I don't know that we got it in here. Do we have it in here already? I think I have a files Photoshop. I could have sworn I made the thing. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this 
Yeah. No, did not save that. Um, here we go. Pack dot PNG, right? Or we'll do. Yeah, sure, actually. But we'll, we'll do pack dot PNG. There we go. This, right? I put this picture here. This is my personal pack dot PNG. We're gonna, we're gonna add a different. Hello? I'm gonna add a different thing. I don't know why this won't, like, go away. It's like it won't delete itself. Whatever, I'll make it from scratch. No, don't save that. New file. I uh, will do a custom of 256 by 256. We're gonna call it new pack PNG. And we're going to create. And so now you could make you can make an image. I'm gonna just grab a random meme off of like um off of like Google, let's see, <laughs> meme, images, hopefully it's, it's, it's okay, friendly stuff. Matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this over here just in case I don't find, just in case I see something not friendly. You cat meme face. There. We'll do this one, because this is essentially how I was looking. Copy image. I will paste it in here. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever works. So this is our pack.png annoying file export, quick export as PNG. And for our tutorial pack, we're going to save it as that. Save. Yes, I want to replace it. This is this is th this is so stupid that I had to deal with this last time. You're doing your little loady thing. Get out of here. Okay. No, I don't want to save that. It's not important. And so now let's go to our tutorial pack. And boom. So here is our image. So that shows up correctly. We're going to grab all this stuff. Let me just make sure that this has the correct... Yes, it does. Looks great. Perfect. Awesome. So we're going to grab our assets, our pack.mc meta and our pack.png. We're going to compress into a zip file. And while that's doing that, I'm going to open up Minecraft, honestly. Put that over there. Five seconds. This is going to be titled our tutorial pack. Bam. Go ahead and hit play. Let's put this over here. Oh, Lord. Oh. Whew. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm excited to like get into like doing that 3D modeling and stuff. That's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Lots of stuff to, to do and talk about. And the um and the texture variation. That is that that's an interesting concept to talk about. Hopefully we can implement it correctly without error. <laughs> um for this for this course, but you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if it's in the cards today if I don't mess it up. <laughs> To clean my, I need to clean my mouse, dude, or my keyboard. Jeez. Oh, thank you, Bree. Thank you. That's so sweet. She was like, "Let me get in here." I appreciate that. I do. I wanted to end my last stream on a high note. You know, like I'm not like the best teacher, but like. This stuff is hard for me to learn, dude. <laughs> I wanted, I wanted, I want to show more people because it I literally it took so much time and just like effort trying to figure out any of this stuff. Because it's like when you want to learn stuff, 
you, sometimes you don't know where to start and you can't ask questions you don't know the answer to. Like you can't ask things you don't know to ask. And so that was that was the main issue for me was like, I don't know where to start. Hi, <laughs> how are you? I'm just about to, to show some stuff too. So you came at a good time. Hopefully things go as planned. Okay, so. So we're gonna open our resource pack folder and that's opened off to the side there. Um, we're going to take off my custom pack and we're gonna reload the game. This is gonna take a second, but. Um, and so this is the resource pack folder that we just opened up. Uh, we're not gonna change anything yet because Minecraft is still processing those changes. Saw the post while well, trying to mod and ran over here. Thank you. This is my last stream for you guys. This is my last one. It, it's, it's bittersweet, but <laughs> but I really wanted to like show this stuff, you know. Like I wanted to do it under BQA and just like I don't know, I don't know. Hopefully I'll be back though. Hopefully I'll be back when all this stuff is done and school is done and maybe if I feel, you know, I can I can do it. You know, I have some growth. You know, I'll, I might come back, so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ah, oh, man, y'all made me cry, stop. <laughs> okay, so because we have now reloaded all that stuff, um, Minecraft, be nice. Nope, nope, you didn't. You came in at the right time. We literally, I mean, we practically just got started. <laughs> practically. We're, we're 46 minutes in, but I haven't really dug into the meat of the course yet. So you're you're perfectly fine. Um, all right, so this is the old pack. <laughs> also, thank you for the follow. I love that. I love that for us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, so this is the old pack. We have opened up our texture pack folder and we're now going to replace it with the one that we just made so this is the new one we're going to drag and drop we're going to replace you you i don't know why i'm just finding it we just we we got a twitch channel oh yeah <laughs> see you know what this 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 i don't know what it is but as soon as I start streaming, like the pack.png does not want to work. I just, I just changed this. You, this, this game, I swear. It don't want to take my pack.png, whatever. I don't need them. Put you back, annoyance. Okay, so. We zipped it up, we're putting it in. We're gonna we're gonna see the changes that we made. Um, so to catch you guys up, um, essentially we covered um what we did in the first class, which was uh taking Minecraft, a version of Minecraft that we want to mod, breaking it apart um after we have put it in a format that we can manipulate. So we went from a dot jar file to a dot zip file that we unzipped and um then we we went into all that minecraft stuff we took out all the stuff that we didn't need um and we kept the things that we did which was just the textures folder and the models folder we went into the textures folder and we grabbed the file that we wanted to manipulate so that was the sand file we wanted to change the color of the sand we opened that file up in photoshop we changed the properties so we made the sand from what was essentially like a whitish yellow to a pink color. We resaved it as the original file name, zipped all that up, put it back in the game, and then boom, we had pink sand. So we're gonna go back to my beta world, which in the beta world, you should see that pink sand as well, which should be fun. What we've done today though, is we went over a little bit um, about what spec specular maps are, which is essentially a way to trick the game into making a 3D like texture, making the texture look like it's 3D in lieu of modeling, you know? 
um, but it can also be used in conjunction with modeling. Um, specular mapping works um, is works uh, along the RGB channels. So you've got your red channel, your blue channel, and your green channel, or green channel, blue channel. Um, and each one of those um, references a specific property. So your red channel is your roughness or how rough the texture looks. Your green channel is your um, your green channel is your um, metallicness, so how shiny something is. And then your blue channel is emissions. So if your block that you're working with is uh, like it glows, like the lapis block glows, um, how bright or dull you make that is going to be how bright it shines or how little it shines. So that's essentially where we are now. And we have changed um, a few blocks. That is so annoying. Let me turn that off. Keybinds, not keybinds. What is it? Auto turn, turn it off. <laughs> I hate auto jump. Uh, we have changed uh, a couple of blocks to look like my iron texture, but we have given them different levels of um, metallicism. So we're working solely on the green channel right now. So let's take a look at that. We changed, let me do slash clear to clear my clipboard. We changed the stone texture. Our stone texture is supposed to be extremely dull. We've got um, our andesite, which is supposed to be extremely bright. Our iron is our normal texture and our diorite is a little dull hopefully um hopefully the difference is visible enough that you guys can notice it but we'll see oh man that is that is crazy all right so i mean there's definitely a difference pink sand is pretty cool i'm not gonna lie so g tab s tab respected these are kind of out of order but that's okay did it save the thing? So let's see here. I think it might be spazzing out because of the. <laughs> I think it might be spazzing out because of the um, the with them being the same textures. But essentially, we've got them looking quite different from each other. I see that that super dark that super dark dull is coming through on that on that far one there. Let me see. I feel like it's not really giving us the shine that we want, even on the the one that is normal. And I wonder why that might be, because if we do, if we go back to my pack, which is the normal, um, which has the normal iron, it's it also still looks shiny. Um. Let's let, wait for this to, to load. I'm going to pull back up Photoshop so that you guys can see what that what this process looks like from the artistic side of things. Let's see here. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, so... Is it... You're still doing that. Okay. I think this was this just the see open recent metal pack CD. Okay, yeah. So this is the this is the channels that we're working on here. We're working on the green channel. This is the basic this is my basic default iron texture with our green. And if we activate all these channels, we'll see that it's like a light grayish. Now, for the for the andesite, I essentially brought it up to a very, very bright white. Do not save that. So yeah, see, this is that same, that is that same iron texture with that same with that same green brightness so to me that's very that's very strange as to why that's not working in the in the altered version 
I wonder if I do the same thing here in my pack, will it work? So I'm gonna test that. Let's see. Let's put that back. Let's go back to Photoshop. Or rather, because we technically already have the files that we need, so we could just transplant them. Let's see, go to tutorial pack. Let's go to my pack. In development, it's just modern. I'm going to my development, my assets, and I'm actually going to copy this. Yeah, I'm going to copy this guy. Thank you for the follow. All right. So in tutorial pack, we're going to do, I'm gonna paste that in here. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name it tutorial pack two. I'm gonna see if it has the same issue that this one has. Okay, so let's go to our assets. Let's go to our models, our textures, one of the textures we're gonna block. And then we change, let's do, let's just do like one of these. So we'll do, let's, let's try one of our more dull versions of this. So we'll do the diorite here. We're gonna cut these and we're gonna put them in what I'm now calling tutorial pack two. We're gonna assets, Minecraft, textures, block. And then, so in here I have diorite textures. These are my diorite textures. So we're going to, it is, yeah, it is really just that simple. Um, Honestly, the the most difficult things about creating a texture pack is the little the little tricks, <laughs> you know. It's tripping out. Thanks so much for being on. Oh, thank you. Let's see here. Yes, replace those. And so now. Okay, so now. Our diorite has changed. Leaving you on purpose, what? I mean, yes, but not because I want to. <laughs> so we have changed our diorite. And now I'm going to grab our assets, our pack.mc meta and our, our pack.png and I'm going to compress to zip. Let's see here. Um, tutorial pack two. Okay, so now let's try to add this to. Let's try to add this in now and see if we're gonna have the same issues. Tutorial pack two. Okay, so that's showing up. Pack dot png is showing up. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Honest to God, I really do. Let's reload Minecraft. I really hope you guys like find success, you know, you're streaming and everything. Um, it has been a pleasure. It really has. Um, the, the growth, the lessons. I really, I really am appreciative. Um, and I'm gonna miss you guys a lot. Let's see, tech savvy. Um, oh. Y'all gonna make me cry. Y'all better stop. I'm not trying to cry on my last stream. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, all right. So let's see. There was other things that I mentioned earlier during this stream. Um, and that was about normal maps having somewhat the same effect as okay so um let's see 
put the pack two on and that was about normal maps having uh, about the same effect as spectral maps but you know you using them in conjunction with each other to <laughs> sad great day noises <laughs> thank you guys thank you oh my goodness uh um freaking yeah um for again for normal maps um i don't know if there's any other program that will allow you to make normal maps all i can really say is um using the normal map site that i provided which i will put that back i'll actually put that in the comments because it's really good to have i say bookmark it especially if you're going to be making packs similar to mine it's really good to have in your arsenal um i have had this saved forever it is great yes here we go this is what it should look like now i don't know why this was not working properly in our tutorial in our original tutorial pack but this is the difference so we've essentially we've essentially got a spectral map that we have set to a very white um, brightness to say yes we really really want this to be really really metallic and then we've got one that we've set to a much lower brightness so we've made it essentially dark gray or black and it's going no we don't want this to be metallic at all we want it to be very very dull we want it to be very dull like it's sand or dirt and so that is the very clear distinct difference in you doing that <laughs> um we may just have to like work with my pack i'm not quite sure why the old pack is acting out but it is and we're just gonna roll with it so that's perfectly fine okay so now that we have talked about um our spectral maps um normal maps i mean honestly normal maps are pretty much the same kind of a deal uh we'll do we'll do a little bit of normal map as well and i think we'll do normal map on i have a lava texture but i'm not sure that i want to do it for that i think um let's see g tab c tab what's a good what's a good block for normal map let's see so we've got i need something that's like super bumpy something that i've made that is super bumpy we could do the magma texture but we could also do let's look at uh cobblestone maybe what's cobblestone look like i can't remember that is cobblestone oh you know what my gravel texture gravel is typically pretty bumpy my only issue with doing the gravel texture is this is an actual photo so i wonder if it will be as visible on this texture i mean look at that this looks like it already has a normal map on it let me see so we're gonna go assets minecraft textures block and this is the cobblestone cobblestone does indeed have a normal map it also has a spectral map so this is what a normal map looks like um this is this is i think two 256 x by 256 x this is where we're talking about pixel count here your pixels per inch ppi um and so all this data here essentially when i when you make a normal map what you want to do is you want to have contrast between the very light portions of your work and the very dark portions of your work what do i mean let's look at this so this is the spectral map that i have for the cobblestone where i'm communicating roughness essentially what i've done is i have taken the actual the actual texture that i made or took a picture of and i have made it grayscale in photoshop i'm going to pump up the contrast so the whites are going to be really really white and the blacks are going to be really really black and so 
essentially when I throw this texture into a site like normal map dot, uh, or normal map what is it normal map dot UK or <laughs> or whatever um let's see the github there we go this site here when I throw this image into here all of the all of the white that it sees in that image it's going to be like oh this is above essentially in a, in a, way, a way to put it is it's essentially above ground right it's height and then all of the black is going to be oh this is a dip this is a crevice or a canvas so that is the way that it is communicating those highs and lows and so when you save that image it's going to look like this all this blue this bright blue that's like the top you know that's like the very level areas and then all that yellow are all the dips and bumps and grooves in between those and so when you throw that normal map and and the spectral map if you want you don't have to but it, it helps if you, when you throw all of that into the program you're gonna get stuff that looks like this where you see these little bumps and grooves and little you know divots and stuff and even though the block itself is not a 3d it's not a it's not a changed 3d model it's just a flat surface it'll look like that when it is interacting with all the new uv rays and light that's coming in with your shader pack and everything now if i were to take off my shader pack you probably wouldn't see this so let's take a look at that so let's do first off let's do weather clear because it is really pouring down out there and <laughs> the the lack of sunlight is going to <laughs> ruin this process so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna clear all that up so that we can actually get a good look at this we're gonna go out in the sunlight i'm gonna grab that guy we're gonna go out here and clearing up pretty good and this is these all got like normal maps and spectral maps on them too you see all those little bumps and divots and all that all that's the same it's all the same process so we're gonna go out here to the oh god oh god my frame rate my frames all right we're good <laughs> we're good okay so yeah so we're going to turn off the shader and we're going to see if this still looks the same because i'm pretty positive it won't <laughs> options so we're going to go video settings shaders and we're just going to go internal because if we if we do something else like that this if this is going to look bad i'm gonna tell you that right now <laughs> yeah it looks okay i mean it looks pretty flat i mean i mean yeah it's a little it's a little something going on there, I guess, but it doesn't have the same kind of look and everything looks kind of grainy too. Now, part of that for me is the way that I make textures. Um, I don't know why, but in my brain, I associate grain with realism. Don't ask me why, I don't know. It's just how I've learned to make textures and taught myself to make textures. I wish I could kind of get away from that, <laughs> but I need more experience. However, for what I want out of my pack and for the purpose of my pack, because it's supposed to be used with this shader in particular, it works, right? All that grain is gone. All that is gone. And our normal maps, our spectrum maps work well together. So we've talked about that. Now let's talk about Let's talk about models. Let's talk about models and how using all of that together can kind of like pump up the the quality of our game here. So back when I was first learning to make a texture pack, and I talked about this a little bit on the first time as well, um, a lot of this process was me like looking at YouTube videos, and playing with other people's packs and going, why is my stuff so different than theirs? I don't understand. <laughs> and taking their pack and breaking it apart and seeing what makes it tick so that I can apply those things to my own pack for my own ideas that I had in my head. 
And one of those things was the 3D models. I remember very distinctly looking at the doors from my pack because when I saw the doors, I was like, oh, we'll just make a custom door texture. Boom, problem solved. And I made the door and I was like, this does not look the same. <laughs> Why does this not look the same? I was like, their stuff kind of looks like it's popping out a little bit. I don't understand. And that's when it dawned on me that they're using a completely different thing. They're using a completely different, they're using models. I was using textures. I didn't know they was using that. And so then I got to looking at textures and models and why, why, how are they making models for this? Insert block bench. <laughs> Now, I did have you guys install that last time we were here. Blockbench is important um, for this. And another thing that we are again, again going to talk about is your file names. This is really, really important, guys. I really cannot stress this enough because anytime something goes wrong, 90% of the time, it is a file name. When we start talking about models, you know, we really got to be cautious and careful because there's a lot of a lot of different parts that go into a model for the door. It's not just like it's not a door is not a block. <laughs> OK, if I'm if I want to make a different texture for like a wood log, it's that it's just that it's a wood log because it's a block. It's one block, but a door for example it's not one block you have to think about oh well we've got we've got the top of the door and then we've got the bottom of the door and then we've got the top of the door while it's open and the bottom of the door while it's open and when we start looking through all these minecraft files we're gonna see all these different names and parts that make up these different these different models so let's take a look at that. We're going to take a look at maybe what is a good block to start with that we can change the model of. And we're going to go from there. So let's go, let's see, texture pack to, we're going to go assets, models, block. Okay. So a lot of everything in the original tutorial pack was like, that was just basic Minecraft stuff that we were just replacing as we went along. For right now, we're just gonna look through some of these models to see what would be a good one to start with. And honestly, I kind of, I kind of want to do a rail because it's, it's, it's it's a lot but um it's i think it's a good little fun thing to do so we'll let's look at rail right so we've got we've got rail we've got the rail corner we've got the rail raised we've got the powered on rail like my god like there's <laughs> There's a lot, um, but we're going to focus on just uh, we'll just do the normal rail, which is just these four here. So I'm going to copy this. These little JSON files here, and then we're going to put them. Well, they're already in pack two. OK. All right, then. So then since they're already in pack two, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go back because we actually oh i know i got it here we go boom we'll put those there and minecraft should just fill in whatever we don't have as it usually does that especially when we're talking about um custom packs it'll usually just fill in whatever is missing because it's still in the game so i'm gonna go block and we're gonna just focus on these guys right here now, when we make a model, we're also gonna have to have specific textures for four different parts of this. Um, we're gonna do, for this, we're gonna do file new Java block item. Um, and so for rail, 
we're going to give it the same name. So rail.json. I'm just going to copy the name here. So copy. I'm going to call it same thing. We don't really have to worry about the parent model um, usually. Um, and this is the default Minecraft texture size. Now the texture that we're going to be putting on the actual block is is going to be a higher size but this is basically just specifying the size of the block itself so okay well we we were in here now so let's go ahead and start making some rails so i hit this add cube over here and let's see we're gonna do um i have this set up similar to autodesk maya so my w is going to be our move key uh, our E is going to be our rotate and R is going to be length, which you can also or, or height, which you can also change the size of that here. 16 obviously is what we're going to want for our was that Z axis Z axis. Um, let's see. I kind of don't want my rails to be very blocky. I'm a big realist person, so I'm going to hit shift and just kind of bring this in a tad. I'm going to go down some. Sure. Yeah. I'm actually going to look up some references, too, because I like to build things uh, <laughs> with references. Railroad tracks. So oh, this, is, this is a pretty interesting image. Let's see. Um, save image. And we'll save this to my downloads folder. So that way it's easy to, to bring up. <coughs> okay. So this is this an interesting looking rail. So it looks like we've got... We've got like the I guess we'll do like the main bottom section and then we'll do like a, a raised section about the top and we'll make that one like metal part and then we've got our wood and then we got like some some bolts here like securing the metal to the wood so we'll go we'll do it like that <coughs> so the rail is a little farther in um, I think it's control D to duplicate since we're doing this Maya style. Cool. And then I'm going to control duplicate again. Bring that up. Bring this. I want to do like, I think like alt and shift. Yeah, I bring it in a lot. And let's put this down a little bit maybe like right about there I think is pretty good that looks good yeah okay and so we will control D to duplicate move this guy over there and we're already got a pretty good start for for tracks or for the rails so now we have the wooden section that we want so let's uh, let's control D and then rotate. Let's shift should do like a 90 degree. If I hold shift and move it, it should shift things um, at like 45 degree angles or so. So let's move this down. And these are pretty flat, so let's do control and shift and bring those that's pretty that's pretty good i say that's pretty pretty wood like maybe let me be a little bit more actually let me bring it up a little bit yeah yeah like i mean i can live with it it's not perfect but i can live with it okay let's bring okay now let's think about this for a second i originally wanted to bring this all the way up but you gotta you gotta keep in mind when you're laying stuff down in minecraft it's gonna like continue it's not gonna place a gap wherever there's not a gap already so if i were to place another rail that has it that like that doesn't have a gap between the the front and the back it's just going to make it look like there's two rail like two wooden planks next to each other and that's not what we want we want it to be a seamless experience all the way around 
So, can I not, can I not just like hit a button and have it duplicate? No? Okay, cool. So, and we're just gonna continue to duplicate until we have exactly what we're looking for. it's okay i need this to be evenly spaced when i place these down so i'm thinking maybe like i don't know i think i think uh maybe i need like a control shift here to like kind of nudge this and i think i think this will give me the space that i need in between both of these because that looks like because these are like half of one block in between so that's half of a block and that's half of a block there so these should work well okay so that's our that's our i mean that's almost our rail completely let's do we, get, we still have to add our little connecting sections i suppose so let's duplicate this oh control d and now let's bring it up maybe yeah there we go and so let's bring this oop hello control shift actually control shift alt so it does it on each side correctly yeah that looks good and so this guy i need you to like come in big time and then we're going to yeah that yeah that looks good i might want to bring it in just a little bit more to be fair for, th for this here it looks like it's a little bit uneven and i don't like that i don't like that still just like a tad yeah that's good enough that's good enough i can deal with that i can live i can live with that okay and so now uh, control D and before I like before I actually like start putting any textures on this I'm gonna want to group similar parts together because it will just really help in the long run just not get confused and accidentally move something or or what have you and you should be able to also um texture things um uh in a in a group together i believe so it's control d bam and that's it i mean that's that's essentially our rail that we're starting with um now let me look at our reference again because it looks like the rail is kind of in like it's it's wedged in between these tiny ones here and not necessarily the wood at the bottom so i want to grab this and we're gonna go control shift and just slide it up a little bit yeah that looks good i think that looks good i like that so over here in our little outliner we see that the blocks that we have selected are selected and we're going to go Control g to group them all i'm going to rename this um uh metal rails and then i'm going to grab these little tiny pieces here Oop all these little guys here i'm gonna actually name these guys connectors because i think that's what they're doing Control g they are connecting the metal to the wood so let's rename connectors and then obviously we've got our wood here that we will name wood or sure yeah i guess that's technically what they're what they're i don't really is there a name for that <laughs> is there a name for the wood in a rail like i don't know but wood serves our purposes now so we're gonna do that 
Okay, so we've made our model. Now we need to add our textures to said model. Now, personally, I like to make custom textures for my models um, and just like, essentially what'll happen is if you make a custom texture that isn't related to anything within the game, is it called a slat? Maybe? Define slat. A thin, narrow piece of wood, plastic or metal, especially one of a series which overlap or fit into each other, such uh, as in a fence or Venetian blind. Maybe. I mean, I think it would fit given the definition. I, I think. Um, I would call it a slap. Shoot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like to make <laughs> I like to make custom textures. And when you when you have a custom texture in your texture pack, it will not show up in the game unless you have something that calls reference to it. So the only thing that would really call reference to these textures would be this model. Um, if the textures are not called if like if you um if you misname something that is exclusively used on a texture what'll likely happen is it'll show up as like a, a purple and black checkered item if, if you've ever seen that in a game or in minecraft that's what that means it means the texture is missing so um i guess let's i'm just gonna use some textures that i've already made mainly because like I'm, I'm not even gonna bother making a texture like in front of you guys right now because like last time it didn't go so well and it should have because like a lot of things <laughs> that should work and work off screen after I test them after I have these classes seem to work miraculously but as soon as I get in front of this camera it stops working so we're not doing that today you're not gonna catch me slipping <laughs> you're not gonna catch me slipping universe but I have textures that we're gonna use so for this texture, we're gonna use, um, I have this tracks texture that I used for my last one. Um, I think those look pretty cool. Um, and this is actually in a different, this is actually in a different thing. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna copy this texture and I'm gonna put it in the folder or in the texture pack that we're gonna be using it in, so um let's see here let's open this up a little bit more uh yeah this is texture pack two so this is the one that we're gonna use um blocks models 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 textures block this is called tracks do i have tracks in here i do have tracks in here um, but I'm going to go ahead and just replace it anyway, just to be safe. So that did that. Um, and then for this guy, we're going to go to, there we go, texture pack two, um, assets, Minecraft, textures, block, and then chuck, bam. Um, that's what we're gonna use for our wood. So all of this, we're going to select and actually we can just select it through the through the um, outliner here and we should just be able to grab this texture and boom now we've essentially retextured all of the things in that group which is great for us um, for our and honestly for our iron parts we're just going to use our iron texture that we already have easy peasy so we're going to import search for iron um bam yeah and so we're gonna grab the connectors and the metal well we're just gonna do one at a time because i don't think it lets you i don't think block bench lets you select multiple groups at a time weird i know um another thing about these textures is if you look over here in the uv section up at the top left um, it'll show you just uh, just how much um, is actually being shown on the model you've made. So these are pretty small models and the area of the texture that it covers is also very small. What that means for us is that it is actually using only a small section of pixels. 
And what that's gonna do is it's gonna drop the quality of what we're looking at. We don't want that. So we're gonna blow this up to where it is looking at all of these textures here, right? Doesn't necessarily have to be completely like, excuse me, it doesn't have to be completely um, perfect or symmetrical or whatever, especially because these are such small parts that they're really kind of irrelevant, but they're noticeable enough because they're part of a texture that you're gonna probably notice that they are not up to par with everything else. So what we're gonna do, is we're just gonna bring all these guys out a little bit so they cover more of the texture area. Bam, easy peasy. And so now let's go ahead and get that same texture on the metal rails. Boom. And uh, these guys are also only covering a little bit. See, and here, you can very much see the difference that's going on here. The pixel count happening on these textures is quite different. So um, we're going to bring this out as well. Take ease here. Yeah. Down, up, west. There you go. Looking much better already. We'll do, we'll do that. I think that looks pretty, mm, pretty okay, it's fine. South, we've got, yes. Thank you, east. That's on the complete opposite side over there and then north. Just bring those all the way out, cause what I'm looking for though, let's bring, the, what is it, up? It is up. I'm trying to find a area that I like, that I won't, that I won't be mad at. Hmm. I think that's okay. I think that works. Um, I also did realize that our wood is having the same issue, so let's fix that. We want that high quality wood. We don't want that. We don't want that messed up wood. We bring all of this out, all of it. Really, mainly just the up and down. Everything else is just like really, really small sections, but. Because I am the way that I am, <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Okay, so that is that. That's our rails. So now we just got to put these in the game some kind of way. Now, I do want to say that you, obviously there is um, an orientation factor in all of this. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you're building, you're building in the right direction. I'm saying this because I know for a fact that I'm going to mess this up. <laughs> um, will you, will you, Block Branch is really good in the fact that it shows you kind of like where you're already pointing and where you're going to be placing the block. So it kind of, kind of gives you a little bit of a heads up more than another modeling program like Autodesk Maya or Blender. Uh, and that's mainly because Block Branch is pretty much made for Minecraft. Those other programs, you're gonna have to figure it out. To be fair, I'll be figuring it out anyway, but it's at least you've kind of got some idea of where things are going. So we have made our um, our model. And before I save this, I'm actually gonna get rid of the models that are already in here because since this is obviously technically my pack I've already made. I already have a, a rail model in here and other models that I've made. We don't really, we don't really need that for the tutorial pack. So we're going to get rid of those. Um, tutorial pack two models. Yeah. Some of the models that I've done, um, oh, literally just the rails are in here. I think I took them out. Seems like it. Sounds good to me. Shoot. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and 
save project. Um, save project as development. Let's see, tutorial pack to files block bench rail dot bb model. Oh, these are all of the 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 things that I had from the prior pack. Interesting. Tutorial pack. And let's get this out of here. All these block bench files that I don't need for this. That's what really needs to go. Okay, save. Um, the thing and you're probably gonna figure this out yourself if you do end up working in Blockbench. Um, is you gotta be careful with this program. I highly recommend. Um, I highly recommend that you export before you save your file, and that's because sometimes it'll do this thing where it will, if you make so. Okay, how do I explain? So you know how I was talking about how uh, like tech like models like a rail have multiple different versions of the same thing, all specifying different things. So for instance, an activator rail has an on and an off state. They use the same model except for one property or your difference between the two. So if I make the text or the model for um, an activated rail in the off state, but I don't, um, but I, I then go to make the, the on state and I don't export it before I save it. It's going to basically overwrite the prior thing that I made. And then I'm going to be looking really crazy because I'm not going to notice it. And when I save the activator rail in the on state, it's going to overwrite the one in the off state. And then I'm gonna be confused when I zip up my package and go, why are these texts, why are these models the exact same? So when you're working in Blockbench, please, for the love of God, export whatever you make before you save your file because it's not gonna pick up the change. And I have no idea why. I guess that's just the thing we have to deal with because it's not you know, one of the the big beefy modeling programs. So file export. Um, you're gonna export just as like a normal block item. If you are working in like Maya or Blender, you would probably have to use like a OBJ file. You would have to export as OBJ, I believe. OBJ is just object. Um, and then so texture pack assets minecraft models block rail.json save and now now that it has realized that this is a completely different model i'm going to save the project file as rail.bb model okay that's done so what I'm hoping is we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna work on the other versions quite yet. What I'm hoping is that when we zip up this pack, this is the model we will see. That is all we're gonna focus on right now, getting this exact model in the game to replace the current rail model. So let's close block bench. Ugh. Okay, so. Let's go to assets, Minecraft or MC meta and pack.png, compress to zip. We'll do tutorial pack two. Um, and then let's go to Minecraft. I'm going to go options, resource packs. Okay. I guess before we, we do the switch over, I want to show you my current rail which these should be this, these should be different i believe yes so these are my current rails they are different they look different they're kind of similar to the ones that we made now I, I might actually like the ones that we make better than the ones that <laughs> i i personally made excuse me but we'll, we'll see you know so we're going to options resource packs we're gonna get rid of that And hopefully, I hope to goodness gravy that this works, because I swear to goodness, I would be hot if I did all that work and it didn't work. 
we'll see. I will tell you, the experience of making things live is a completely different experience, so go easy on me. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Texture pack two. Hopefully this, like, I don't know. I don't know why it takes so long to like switch packs for me. It might be, it might be like the file size because you know, with me having such a high pixel count and it really it's not even, it's not even as high as it used to be. Um, Cause it just didn't like having a higher pack than I do now just doesn't fit the purposes of what I want at all. Um, like it just, I suppose that's the only reason. So this is our normal, this is a normal Minecraft rail. Let's see if we can get this to change. Open pack. So, replace, yes, please do the thing. And then, draw your pack two, go. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? I'm probably gonna take a, a small, like, five minute break after this so I can hit the restroom and then I'm gonna come back. But I'm gonna verify this first. Let's see. Cross your T's. Dart your eyes. I wonder if it's still too late for me to make the tuner fest today. I mean, to be fair, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> it, it sounds nice though. Up to you know, I couldn't even go if I wanted to because I don't have my car. <laughs> I don't have my car. I still at the shop. Still getting painted. They said they're going to call me back today. Um, literally, the, it's been raining nonstop. So, oh, look at that. Look at that. The rails are different and they're facing the correct way. Let's go. So there you go. You have that. That is, a mo that is your modeling tutorial. Now, let me take a look at this. Yeah, so... Naughty me. Remember that thing I told you guys about prepping your prepping your 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 textures before you put them in the game. Yeah, I I did not do that with the iron. I'm I'm I don't know, man. I <laughs> I, I guess I thought I had, or maybe or maybe I did. Um, but I when I when I changed or wiped my computer, maybe I saved the wrong version of the pack. That's probably what happened, honestly but I can see the difference. I can see the textures separating here. I can tell them apart. But outside of that, look at our rails, dude. They're so shiny. We got our spectrum maps working in there. We got our, our wood. We got our, everything is literally looking really, these are really good. <laughs> All right, so. Now, the thing that I did want to talk about, especially regarding this, is we only did one model for this one rail. That is the issue. And you want to know how I know? Look at this. Do you see these? They are completely different models. This is my old rail that I made versus the new one. That don't look right. Now, okay, let's look at them on a curve. Then we got this here, and then boom. Completely different model issue, right? So this is why you have to, modeling, changing the models of your pack is much more involved. There, are, There's much more for you to do, much for, much more for you to think about. It's not just, oh, I made the rail, it'll work now. No, it's it's rail plus rail in the up position northwest, rail plus in up position southwest. It's rail on curve. And you need to make sure that you name every single one of those correctly. Otherwise, you're gonna have missing textures or you're gonna have missing models or whatever, what have you. Um, and this is the perfect example of that. So, 
We're gonna take a small break, maybe five minutes, and then we'll come back. Um, there, I think there's still something that we need to talk about. Yeah, we're probably gonna go a little bit over time today because um, now that we have technically talked about models, um, I do want to talk about and maybe even demonstrate um, connected textures. Um, and this is our texture variation that we were talking about earlier. This will really like, it'll really kind of make you stand out, um, I think. Um, we won't have this uh, block next to block. We'll have like block over block or, you know, stuff like that. We'll have our sand going over the top of, of our grass or our grass in, like encroaching on the stone or whatever. Instead of just two hard lines separating the blocks. So we'll talk about that in a second. I will be back. Go get some food, guys. All right.
Oh, there we go. Yeah, my my camera decided that it uh mm, interesting. Hi guys, I have come back. I was probably either a little more or a little less than five minutes. I am so sorry. But I am here. Okay, and let me fix this camera because what in the devil? Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Where's my where's my thing at? Chat, social, box, donation, subscriber, Logitech. Uh, configure video. Apply. Okay. Well, that's fixed now. Continue as normal. All right. So. We have talked about our models. Now what? Now we got to talk about connected textures and for this I will bring back up our PowerPoint because this is um this is a very interesting topic that um you really it's one of those things where you don't really think about it until you see it and you're like oh wow <laughs> what is that why, why, why is that doing that that's kind of cool um, and it's just that was exactly the, the the response that I had when I first saw it, and it was just I was like I gotta learn how to do that. Now let's see where is the PowerPoint? Here is the PowerPoint. Okay, CTM files. I want to remind you all that I am still very bad at making PowerPoints, so I have not put any pictures here, but it's okay because we don't need them. So. What are CTM files? They are connected textures in a shortened sense. Um, basically, it's how blocks interact with each other. You define the block, you tell it what you want it to interact with, and you give it a descriptor to tell it how many tiles, you know, or textures, I suppose, that you want to have it make those changes, right? So um, we need a properties file for this so a little bit of code if you want to say it like that just a text file it's nothing too something too fancy nothing crazy um where we uh describe the match block which is what do i want this block to interact with i want my maybe i want my my sand to have a little scatter onto the grass that is placed next to what if you know what if i want my my um my my stone texture to change to i don't know magma or something whenever it i have it placed next to like andesite or whatever who cares but that's what that's for um tiles are your texture variants and methods define the number of textures needed in each of those variants so or, you know, something like that, yeah. <laughs> um, so there are three different types. There's CTM, which is just a standard 47 tiles. And then you've got your CTM compact, which is just five. It's just five different variations. So it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, but then there's the one that I like, which is the overlay, which is 16 tiles. For me, 16 tiles feels like the best one for Minecraft in general. It kind of covers all the bases, you know, all the little coverages, possibilities you could have without it being too many. I think overlay is the best one. Um, and um, there are some templates online as well. So trying to decide which one that I want to do for this one today. Um, I guess we'll just do my regular, I guess we'll do our regular 16 um, and that'll be that. But let's first look at, let's first look at our template, right? So I can just, I can just do it up here cause it's already up. So, uh, CTM template. Uh, CTM, yeah, actually, I'm gonna do just template instead of specifying which one. Here we go. Okay. 
So this is, just open an image a new tab. This is a pretty good example of what we're doing here, right? So our typical, so this is our, our compact. It's the one through five. Um, and what I mean by um, these tiles, like covering all the bases is like, essentially, essentially it's like where another block is in relation to the one that you want to change. So if it's so like, what happens when there's a block on the right side or the left side or the top or the corner or whatever, there's a different texture for each one of those scenarios. And that's what I'm talking about. So I usually do the 16, um, but this one shows all of them. This one, this one like has like a list and it's like it has it divided as well. This is kind of, this is interesting. But we're gonna do the 16 because I think that's probably just the easiest one for me. So let's go ahead and try that. So we will just talk about what well, what we'll do is we'll do CTM grass over stone. That should probably be the easiest way to go about it, right? So uh, first things first is to get our files and everything set up. So let's go ahead and get out of Minecraft. Let's take this off of the screen. And let's do, let me see here. Let's open up File Explorer for one. And Assets, Minecraft. Okay, so the CTM files are actually going to exist in the Optifine folder. Now, originally we got rid of the Optifine folder and that's perfectly fine, just make a new one. <laughs> it's literally that simple. So you would right click new folder and then you would just type Optifine. I'm not gonna do that because I already have an Optifine folder here, so I don't have to worry, but you just need to make an Optifine folder. And in this folder, I have a, another folder that I've labeled CTM. Now, if you take a look, um, we just have our grass properties in here. I have kind of already set up prior. This is actually from, this is actually from my pack. Uh, we're just gonna alter the, the text a little bit to fit what we want. Um, and hopefully this goes well. <laughs> um, and I actually have um, a little document that I'm pretty sure that I, I, I did this when I was like researching into what CTM files were. Um, and that was again, match block, what I want the connection to connect to, the textures to connect to. Uh, the method, she decides the variance, all the stuff, and then information about those files, which can be found on the GitHub site. And yeah, so we're going to be um, altering the glass overlay dot properties. And for each block you want to have these kinds of effects, you need to make a properties file for them. So it'd be like sand overlay dot properties or whatever else. Um, but we're doing grass right now. So or the grass block, essentially. We're gonna open that in Visual Studio. And this is our code. Now, again, you do not need Visual Studio to do this. But if you are going to make mods or if you want to further experiment with Minecraft or even games in general, you're going to want to have this and it's completely free. So um, if you are making this from scratch, you're going to go file new uh, project or actually not file new project, you're going to go file new, new file and then you're going to choose a text file. And you open and then you'll you'll get this <laughs> um and so this is essentially what we're gonna type this is essentially what you type in and i'm gonna kind of go through what all this means so match blocks and we've got our minecraft tags for what we want um it to interact with so i have in my original that i want my grass block to interact with sand dirt and stone bricks 
Now, if you don't know exactly what Minecraft refers to these items or IDs as, you can actually look up the IDs. Um, let's see. There should there should be online a Minecraft ID list. So Minecraft ID list 1182. There you go. So this is this is the Minecraft ID list. And as you can see, it's got like Minecraft granite, stone, whatever. And it's also got the numerical ID. Right now, we're just using the item ID, though I'm pretty sure you can use the numerical ID in place of a uh, an item ID if you wanted. Don't quote me on that. But usually whenever I'm doing other things that require IDs, that usually works the same. So get out of that. So I have it that uh, my match blocks are going to be sand, dirt, and stone. But for this, we really only want, um, really only want stone bricks. And let me make sure that that is, we can do cobblestone, because I think that's what I have out on the path right now is cobblestone. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I want I think I want cobblestone. Let me check the ID and make sure that I'm doing that right. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna copy this and then I'm going to paste it here. <laughs> and then we have right here in our methods, we're gonna we have it defined as overlay because that's the method that we want. We want our 16 tiles and then we're going to describe the amount of tiles within that right up under it, which is zero through 16. We don't start at one, we start at zero. Um, and then we do connected tiles equals grass block. We are telling it what we want the, the actual block, like what, what actual block we are trying to alter essentially which is grass block top for the grass block in particular they're actually like it's actually built up of different parts um there's like um there's like grass block top grass block side a grass block overlay um and all of that makes up the the top layer of grass that you see in minecraft so um and then this down here is just making reference to um like the the color index and all that stuff we don't really want to focus too much on that because it's not really that important in the grand scheme of things but um you would just change this appropriately here so if it was like sand you'd put sand blah 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 <laughs> same same kind of principle here so um we have essentially fixed our properties tab and we're gonna file save as and i'm just gonna make sure okay this is in the correct folder so we're gonna save yes replace and then boom so we've made our properties file now we just got to get to making the textures and that should be what that should be it should be <laughs> So we're going to close Visual Studio. We're done with that. Um, now we need to make sure that we get those textures in this same CTM folder. So let's see here. I'm going to take my current grass. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, ba -ba 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 my current grass from my current pack so textures block so i have grass in here already yes so these are my this is my grass right here um i kind of just like i kind of want to get rid of all these other textures because they're unnecessary so um yeah, we it doesn't really need to happen. I'm just gonna focus on what I what I want to do right now, which is just the grass blocks. So um I'm going to open this up in where is the where is it? There it is. Grass block top. Open with Photoshop. 
yeah, that's how we're going to do this. Um, now, one thing that I feel like, and I might have to try, like, do some trial and error on this part in particular. Um, essentially, I want, like, a fully, there are going to be suctions that need to be transparent. But when you only make, um, like, corners transparent, it'll only, it won't, like, fill out the rest of the block. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get them to appear like the like the rest of the blocks. Uh, it, it 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 doesn't make sense. I, I'm I'm sure, but I will. You will see what I mean in a second. <laughs> so, all right, my uh, Photoshop. What what are you what are you doing? What? I, I hear things. I hear. I'm hearing like error noises. What what is your problem? Is it because it's open in something? Do I have to do I have to do this a different way? I'm probably gonna have to do this a different way. Got here, Autodesk client. All right. We'll do instead this here. And then we'll file save as texture pack two files images this photoshop that's what i want and this is going to be ground ctm save okay so now that we have made a ctm file in photoshop i am going to remove all of the textures that we are not going to be working with and so that is literally like all of my little extra grass, dirt, and snow blocks. We just want my grass block top. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to like lock my backups. I always keep my backups wherever I'm like, even when I'm making a new file, if I have backups and I'm just going to keep it in there. So now we have to make our CTMs. So I'm gonna, hopefully gonna grab that template. So CTM overlay template. Now I'm gonna look for overlay specifically. Um, ah, okay, got you. Okay, download. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, copy. Give me this, paste. So here's the thing. So these lines that you see right here, these are actually telling you what, um, what these textures are supposed to look like. For example, let's kind of blow this up a little bit. So um, zero, for example, this essentially means that this texture in the background here, if we look at this zero, it's got an entirely white mid section, but it's got green on the outer edges on the perimeter. That means that the texture itself is only on the outside perimeter. That's what that means. So everything in the center is transparent. Likewise for number one, if there, and this one actually is a little bit more easy to conceptualize probably, um let's say and actually that this is a good idea so one right it's got um it's got green textures on the top the bottom and the left hand side so what does that look like in minecraft this is what it looks like in minecraft we're going to get rid of that it looks like this All right, this is what our texture looks like. And then the texture that we want it to work like around, I guess, if you wanna call it that, let's, G, let's make this like a red texture or something. Why you do that? Get out of here. Okay, this is what's happening. You've got textures on the border and then you've got whatever other blocks. So that means that 
if I, if let's say the red block is stone, I have a grass block at the top, a grass block at the left, and a grass block at the bottom, and just, and like stone on the right. So everywhere there's a grass block, the grass is overlapping the stone, is essentially what's happening. And every one of these is telling you what, like how that is interacting with the block. So we're going to try to match that as best we can. At least do like a couple, you know, um, so that you can see it happening in real time. So we're going to do, let's just do like zero, one, two, and three and see if maybe that'll make a difference. Hopefully it does. Is that would make my life so easy. <laughs> So, uh, and we're also going to name them based off of the, the number. So this is going to be zero. Ooh, that's, that's a Q. Zero, one, two, and then we're doing three. So let's see here. So zero is completely empty in the center. So we're going to grab our brush tool. And I'm actually going to maybe push the opacity down so I'm not like, actually it's a little too far down. There we go. So I like to use like a foliage brush or something. That way um, I kind of don't have just like these big circular blobs of nothingness. Um, even better if the foliage brush has um, like it changes direction, which there are some brushes, um, part of some Photoshop packages that do just that. Um, but this one does not. It makes me kind of sad, but that's okay. <laughs> so I just like want. It's just going to be a little difficult. A little cheesy, I think. <laughs> do um if you hit uh, the the, cl the square bracket um on the keyboards it'll go either up or down for your brush size okay so that's fine we'll you we'll do this for for zero for one we have um top left and right so we'll do top left and right uh Okay, let's get rid of that. And then let's just do like a little cleanup because there's like a lot of like oof in here going on. All right. Just like, yeah. Get rid of some of that haziness going on there. Sure, works for me. And then two, we've got just the top and the bottom. Sounds good to me. So let's do E. And let's make this pretty big so we don't have so much to so much to get rid of. Some variation in here, just a little bit. It also helps to, um, now when you do this as well, you do also still need to do, um, I still think you need to do your, your prepping, you know, you want it to still look seamless. So for instance, if you put these next to each other and they don't quite line up, you're, you're going to want to go through that and fix that. Um, but we're not going to do all that right now. We're just going to get rid of these little sections so that we can get this working. And then for three is the exact opposite of one in which the left side is empty. So we're going to get rid of that. So I actually don't know if um, I actually don't know if this will. Oh, oh, hold up. That's too big. I actually don't know if this will, um, if we don't do any of the other files, like, will it still show up? I don't know, but I am curious to see. So we're going to test that out. This is like, 
is, in some ways, this is also like a learning experience for me. It's kind of how things are. Like when you teach, you still also kind of learn things, you know? Preaching to the choir and, and uh, all that stuff, I guess. So that's like kind of a different term, but anyway. Preach to yourself first, that's what I mean. <laughs> so, okay. So we've got the three textures that we want. Um, and we're gonna add those to our CTM file, or our CTM folder, and see what it do. Quick export in assets, Minecraft, textures, block. This is not in textures. This, no, this needs to go in, first off in texture pack two, and then in our Optifine folder in our CTM section. So boom, and we'll see. We'll see. I'm nervous, man. I hope this works. Save. And then we'll close that. And then we will... Ooh, get back. So let's check and make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. Black states, models, Optifine, CTM. Okay, there are our CTM files. Fingers crossed. Um, And then... Now let's go zip everything up and put it in the game and see if maybe, maybe it works as intended. Oh, my body. <laughs> Texture pack two. Tutorial pack two. Okay. Minecraft, where are you? There you are. Options, resource packs, studio, switcheroo. <laughs> yep. I'm trying to think in the event that this does not work, where I may have fallen short in this process. I can only imagine maybe I did not name the block right. Like maybe I didn't um, name the, the the interacting block right. Or maybe, um, maybe, or maybe it literally just like, it's not gonna register anything less than the 16 blocks. That is also a possibility. Um, in which case, I'll probably just go ahead and do the other ones or even switch to the five. Um, so the compact. But we shall see. We shall see indeed. Get in there. Yes, replace. Okay, so. <sighs> and so then we have to try to recreate the... Um, the conditions, I guess, if you want to call it that, you know, where we talked about um, where the blocks needed to be placed um, for them to do what we want them to do. So we did the first the first four. So those are pretty easy to recreate. Something. Oh, my glasses. My glasses are dirty. I had to clean them. That's better. Well, it did change. <laughs> it didn't necessarily change the way I wanted, but it did change. Well, now let me see something. Uh, and then we've got. Okay, so that's strange. Oh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> oh, that's strange. Oh, you know what? Oh, I wonder why that's doing that. That is funky. 
I thought maybe the... So it, it actually still might be because we don't have all of those 16 files. Because it might have... That is odd. That is odd. Well, I wonder, well, I wonder why. Cause like, so when we, when we loaded the pack in, it did change, but it, and it, hey, and it's like, it's, it's different. What? Cause not all of these are the same. And it's cause this is here. It's cause that's there. How crazy is that? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive. It's because we don't have all 16 of them in here. And my freaking game is, is like my frame rate is going down. <laughs> Why my texts are so high. All right. Well, I mean, that is essentially the premise though. <laughs> Um, you can change the way that these blocks interact with each other based on what they're next to. And see, we've got these like overlapping right here. Now, they're supposed to change when you have, like when you place them next to other. I think I might actually just be having an issue like processor wise because like this is completely slowing down my computer. I've got too much stuff up. I'm not even sure that if I made the changes, it would actually take effect because there's just too much stuff running close some of this stuff it's probably not gonna help i think my computer's just had enough i need a better processor <laughs> but um yeah um i'll be sure to include some like helpful um some helpful information about ctns so that you guys can read up on them as well yeah i'm not sure they're gonna i'm not sure it's gonna change like real time this is like... It's so... Okay, well look at... Okay, so yeah. So... Then... Let me look at that image again. Oh, I have an idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I have made these textures before already in a prior version of this pack. Um, it had a different version of grass though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import that grass. I'm going to import that, those CTM files and see if it does the same thing. That would be, that would be interesting. Now, oh yeah, see, they are changing. Look at that. That's cool. That's still cool. I did it wrong, but <laughs> in this in this tutorial, but that that is that is the premise. That is what it's supposed to do. So you win some, you lose some. Let's uh let me, let's let's actually let's replace those files and see see if it does the same thing. So that those files are actually on my flash drive that I have hooked up already. So I kind of anticipated this. I'm not gonna lie. Um. Where is my, is it disk drive E? It is, question mark, question mark. Assets, Optifine, it is. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go to texture pack two. I'm gonna go to textures, block, and we're going to replace, um, I'm gonna replace the original grass files. So block. There we go. So these are my legit original grass files. I will copy and paste in here. Yes, thank you. And then we are going to replace the CTM folder in our Optifine folder. Um. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. It's a grass overlay is what we want. The grass. Oh, you know what? That's another thing. I didn't actually make a grass overlay folder in here. That might also be one of the issues that we 
that we have here. Okay, so this one has all of these files in here. And as a matter of fact, this is actually a little bit different than what I originally had. Let me see. Like the makeup of this is a little bit different. Where's the download that I just had of the of the CTM thing? Hmm. I'll just have to pull it up in Google again so I can see it. CTM overlay template images. Open image in new tab. Okay, now this one looks a little bit different. Oh, you know what? Well, I'm not quite sure why this guy has, um, has like a red and blue thing, but perhaps I have it inverted. Perhaps I have it inverted in my head. Like the blue is actually supposed to be the actual texture and the the texture it's interacting with is actually on the outskirts. Could be, could be, could be, could be. But this is what we got here. So let's do, so we've got all of that in here. Now we should just need to pack it all up and see what it do, shall we? So compress to zip. Whew. Not a day goes by, do I not think I'm getting carpal tunnel? <laughs> all right, pack two, tutorial pack. Okay, uh, and so options, resource, let's get that out of here. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see if this is what we're looking for. So I hope it is. I hope to see some, some interesting changes out of this, something more like what we're looking for because we got it to change. We got it to change, technically speaking, and to act the way it was supposed to. We just ha we just messed up the the way that it interacts with the blocks. So usually done by um, usually done basically putting the wrong textures where they're not supposed to go. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm hoping that this one is the correct way. Like I like they're in the correct order essentially. Let's see. Resource packs, open pack folder, bam. And the tutorial pack two, replace, thank you. And then, let's see, cross your fingers. We're gonna see if it do the thing. Hmm. <sighs> This has been a fun time off of work. I am not looking forward to going back to work. I'm tempted to take off another day. I'm so dead serious. Like I am really tempted to request my day off. <laughs> like this close. Cause like, I don't know why, but like this entire time I've just kind of felt like I haven't really been rusted. I just feel like I've been doing the things that I want to do things that I never really get to do because I'm working if it's not school work then it's like work work and it's like but I don't feel rusted if that makes sense I mean it likely won't change if I here we go man this grass is crazy dog <laughs> this grass is crazy man I have come a long way but yeah look proper I'm so glad I changed this grass. <laughs> but this is how this is supposed to work. Now, obviously, you can see here, I did not 
this is since this is actually from a very old version of my pack this is the same pack it's just um it's been altered every time i learn to do something a little bit different um like i change that that change every time i learn to do something a better way i will immediately just just change um like how i have made a texture um and that's essentially what happened with this grass like i found a better way to make grass and i was like we changed grass um and i realized why this is doing this um this is changing in real time because um in minecraft you know when you place two grass blocks or when you place a grass block next to like a dirt block it'll change the dirt block to, to grass so that's actually really cool to see in, in real time but um so we've got oh man so we've got like sand over here and now we're making it interact with the sand um and now in this earlier version of the pack i did not do my my texture thing that i'm supposed to do where i make sure that everything looks seamless but i was still very much in the learning phase for ctm textures and so this one you can see there's a little bit of texture peeking up at the top that top left corner i believe that's what i have for number zero as a matter of fact um and so yeah every single one of these has a different pattern on each side so they interact differently based off of what and where they're next to so i mean that's it guys that's that's how you make a texture pack all of that stuff texture textures spectral maps connected texture files like you literally now have the tools to make whatever you want to make um the first the first stream that i did is already up on my youtube channel i did have to edit it a little bit to get rid of some of the technical errors that happened uh when we first started so that's up and on the channel you are very welcome to watch that i am working on getting the condensed versions of those actually like actual tutorials that you can follow in a playlist um that you can just kind of go through um, and scrub through if you're looking for specific parts um, i'm working on getting those up and this this tutorial will be on the on my channel as well mr 1623 my youtube um that'll be up in the next couple of days as well so <sighs> i hate to go i do i'm glad i got to do this it wasn't perfect, but I really pushed myself out of my comfort zone and I'm happy that I did. And I just like, I super de duper really hope you guys make something cool. Just like take whatever you've learned and and really make some, some really cool stuff, man. There's a lot of tutorials out there. I hope to hopefully make some texture tutorials for you guys as well. You know, how do you make sand and how do you make leaves and all that stuff, all that really cool stuff we'll see but um i guess thank you guys for watching and um if you enjoyed literally anything that you've seen me do on bqa at all <laughs> you can follow me on my twitch at mr 1623 official and my youtube i post there sometimes <laughs> at mr 1623 and um i guess that's it I will be streaming on my channel as well today. Like, I'll just be playing normal Minecraft. I'm not sure if it'll be like right after this or maybe like a couple of hours, but I'll be going live today um, just to just have fun, just relax and play. And uh, yeah, so I I'll see you guys in the next one someday. <laughs> <laughs>